the question is are we preaching a full gospel or are we preaching an off gospel so let us quickly look into the words of the apostle paul when he was writing to rome in the book of romans chapter 15 and let us read from verse 18 to 20 the book of romans 15 and verse 18 he says for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and in deed to make the Gentiles obedience in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and around to Ilikirim I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So I made it my aim to preach the gospel not where Christ was named lest I should build on another man's foundation as that is written, to whom it has not be announced that they shall see, and for those who have not heard and shall understand. Hallelujah. So here we clearly see, I will not speak of those things which Christ has not told me to speak. So don't speak something if God has not told you to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Because one thing we need to understand, as a Christian, we are here to please God and not to please man. Amen. If you are a man pleaser, you better change it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because one day you will stand before God and not before man. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I will always say that whatever you do, do it unto the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Not unto man. Because the day you die, you will stand before him. A brother and sister. And that's why Paul determined. He says that I will only speak of those things which God has accomplished me in word and deed and that too through the Holy Spirit. I am not here standing on the pulpit or standing here to speak rubbish. My brother and though Paul was a very learned man, he was very intelligent. He had the most knowledge. His, his tutor was Gamaliel, was one of the well-known scholars during the Roman Empire. He was a student of that. And according to church history, according to church history, his qualification today, if you compare, is equivalent to a doctorate or a PhD. Such a learned person, such a well-known person. He was known, my brother and sister in Christ. Though he had the knowledge of this world, though he had the knowledge of Torah, he had the knowledge of the Pentecost, though he had the knowledge of the law, he did not know Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today you may have the wisdom of this world, the knowledge of this world, but the question is, do you know Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. He did not know who Jesus was till he had an encounter at the road of Damascus. When God himself revealed himself in the flesh Jesus. He said, who are you Lord? Why are you persecuting me? He did not know Jesus. He said, who are you Lord? Because the word Lord is mentioned in the Old Testament many times. Hallelujah. When we see David praying or supplication to God, he speaks, my Lord. You see clearly. But he did not know. He said, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus. Why are you? Prosecuting me. Hallelujah. He said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Who are you prosecuting? It's hard for you to kick against God. He did not know Jesus, my brother and sister in Christ. Hallelujah. And after his conversion, he did not speak anything else. Amen. In 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 he says, I do not want to know anything else except him being crucified Amen. and resurrected. He says, I don't want to know anything else. Hallelujah. 1st Corinthians 2 2 says clearly, he said, for I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him being crucified. The power of the cross. Amen. That's why for those who are perishing, it is foolishness, but for us, it is the power of God. That's why for the world, when you preach the cross on the streets, it is foolishness. They will mock God like the devil mocked God. The devil till today, he declares and says that Jesus Christ was not crucified and people believe that. Why? Because it is foolishness to them. But for us, it is the power of God. Because on the cross is where the devil was defeated. That's where sin had to die when Jesus Christ was hung on the cross. Amen. And that was revealed to who? To one of the most learned and the most intellectual. The person who had wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Who had pride. 
you know when you are too intellectual and when you have too much of knowledge this pride inside you oh i am very person i am well known i have this and this god had to remove all that rubbish from him Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my brother and sister in Christ. That's why he was became an apostle and wrote the word of God. Every letter that Paul had written was written in the spirit. Amen. My brother and sister in Christ. That's why it considered to him the knowledge which he gained as rubbish. In Philippians three eight, he says, "I consider the knowledge and the understanding of of what I know for the sake of Christ. I make it to known to you that is is equivalent to rubbish for the gaze of." Christ, my brother. For I need, I count all the things lost, but the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, I count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Amen. Because you know why? Because only Christ has changed this life. Amen. This man who was heading to hell. Hallelujah. Had an encounter Amen. with the one who had life. And his life was totally changed and transformed, just like today. Your life and my life have been changed when you had an encounter with Christ, my brother and sister Amen. in Christ. Hallelujah! And that's what Paul was revealing to him. After that, he attained salvation. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. God started to manifest in his ministry with great signs, wonders, and miracles. And that's how he became an apostle. That's way the sign of an apostle is through signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, he said, "What I have fully preached the gospel, full gospel he preached, not half gospel. When you go to a hotel, you eat uh, rice and uh, curry. They don't really give you rice. But today, people they're preaching only of rice. They're only preaching half. They're not preaching the full. Without the manifestation of God's power and glory, the gospel is not full." My brother and sister in Christ, you need to know that. Hallelujah! Amen. Because the gospel belongs of four things. The first thing is salvation. The second thing is sanctification. The third thing is the manifestation of God's power and glory. And the fourth thing is the God judgment and His second coming. When you preach this four, it is called the full gospel. Amen. But if you say, "I like only this," and this is not that, that's where the problem. That's why today if you don't see full gospel preaching. Full gospel preaching. Amen. Because Jesus Christ preached the full gospel. The disciples preached the full gospel. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus himself said in the gospel of John 14 verse 12. The things that I do you shall do. Greater things than this you shall do. Amen. So now the question is. What did Jesus do? In his three and a half years ministry. You must ask this question. Because that's what the question says. You see. Both assuredly I say to you. He who believes in me. The works that I do. He will also do. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my father. So what did Jesus do? You need to ask the question. Because that's what he's telling. What Jesus did was. He went to city to city. And he preached the gospel. That was his first thing. Hallelujah. Because one thing you need to understand that the greatest miracle is always salvation. You know clearly, it's souls. Not making how much money you can make out of it. Like today, many people want to make money out of the ministry. They were souls. That's why the early churches, they were soul oriented. The desire was only to win souls. Nothing else than that. Because they know the minute they go, Whatever we have not accomplished on this planet earth, that all God will give us in heaven. They believed in that. Amen. So that's where they were heavenly minded. They were not earthly minded. Amen. But today, people are earthly minded. They're building their own houses. They're building their own empire. They're building their own ministry. That's not what God has called us, my brother and sisters. So what Jesus did? He preached the gospel. He healed the sick. He cured the lepers. He casted out demons and he raised the dead. That is what he did. That is the full gospel. Amen. Now the question is, are you doing the full gospel? Are you preaching the full gospel, my brother, my sister? In That's why today, many people, they are devoted to another gospel. In Galatians chapter 1, 6, when Paul was coming to the place called Galatia, and he noticed certain things and hear what he is writing. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you 
in the grace of Christ to another different gospel. Who called you? He called you by his grace. But now, you are shifting the gospel. Different gospel. Now, you are, you are preaching as no power. You are not preaching what Jesus has called you to preach. Once upon a day, you preached. Exactly what Christ wanted you to preach. But now, he says, you are now drifting away to a different uh, gospel. And that's what today, another gospel is being preached. Another Jesus is being preached. My brother and sister in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's where you must be very careful. That's what Paul is telling. Amen. And that's where the greatest miracle is salvation. And that's where we need to know that God confirmed always with signs, wonders and miracles. Now the problem with the other denominations which were made by man, not by God. God never divided the church. You, I can show you scripture today. There were only two sects of people they were called. One way call the people of the way. Let me show you everything I will show you in the reference. Let us look into Acts chapter 9 verse 1. Here we see what Paul was doing. <coughs> Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. Then Saul still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest. And next verse see what he says. And asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that he found anyone who, who were of the way. That the men of women that he may bring them bound to Jerusalem. They were known as the people of the way. Because Jesus Christ said in gospel of John 14, 6. I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. Okay. Now let us move to Antioch in Acts 11 verse 26. Let's see what it says clearly. The whole day, they, the whole year they preached way in Antioch. Hallelujah. So let's look in that. Acts chapter 11 and verse 26. And when he had found them, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that the whole year they assembled with the church and taught great many people. And the disciples were first called Christian. Ah, first time they were called the people of the way. The second time they were called Christian. They were not called by any other denomination. Look in the Bible. And that's why today we have so many denominations which are made by man, not by God. You see, because they say that the signs, wonders and miracles uh, stopped during the early church. What they will quote, let me show you. In 1st Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10. First Corinthians 13, but when which is perfect has come, then which is a part will be done away. Which perfect, so they say, that the word of God has become perfect now. But Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8. What he says? Jesus Christ the same God yesterday, today and forever. Now you say. Oh we don't have to believe in the manifestation of God's power. We don't have to believe in miracles and healing. Speaking in tongues. Prophecy. That's only for the early church. It's not for us. Now it's only word. We must preach the word. You say you know the word. The devil knows the word more better than you. Amen. I'm telling you in my experience, my walk with God one day, it happened back home in India. One person, he went to preach the gospel. When he came back, he brought an evil spirit. And uh, the sister of that brother called us. And he says, can you please come because my brother has now been possessed with an evil spirit. And the devil was waiting for us. We were standing over there. And the devil is telling, can you quote? He was quoting from Mark, Matthew, everything. Four or five references he was quoting. And we had the Bible and one of the brother is there who is little timid. He is reading. He is good at reading. He is reading. And then suddenly he interrupted. This evil spirit interpreted and says, you must be thinking, no, how I am able to tell all this? He said that. I said, yes. Do you know who I am? He said. That is in my early days of my walk with God. This is in 2000. And immediately say, you do not know who I am. He said, I am the same Satan who tempted Jesus in the wilderness when he was fasting for 40 days. So what are you boasting and thinking that you know the word of God? I know the word of God more than you. He said that. 
I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I don't joke when I stand over. I'm not here to please or make stories. No, that is not my portion. God is my witness. I stand before God and man in whatever I say today. He said, how you are thinking? I know the scripture. He said, I am the same Satan. I know. Because I lived with God in heaven and I know everything. So what are you thinking that you know the Bible more than me? But today we will all even know the Bible because the things that have become perfect is God. But what does the devil fear? He does not fear because you know the Bible. The devil fears the power of God. You know why? Hallelujah. Because that power has been given to man. It has been given to us. Why to us and not to anyone else? Not even to angels. Because we have been created in the image and the likeness of God to rule and to have dominion over everything. When God says that I give you power over domino everything, it includes the creation and includes even the devil. Because the devil was before a fallen angel which are being created by God for worship. Who was Lucifer in heaven? He was a worshipper. He was anointed cherub, the Bible says clearly. They were string instruments made for him the day he was made. Bible clearly says, read in the book of Ezekiel, it says about him. What he fears, he fears the power of God and that's way, you know what is the devil doing? He is making you ignorant of the power of God as a manifestation of God's power. So what he is telling the church is, you can preach the gospel, no problem. Preach the gospel. But don't go near his power. Because when you go to his power, you know what happened? Jesus gave an open declaration to Peter. He says, who do you say, Peter, I am? He says, you know, Jesus, you are the son of the living God. And he says, flesh and blood has not revealed to me. But you shall be called Peter. And upon this rock, I shall build my church. The gate of hell shall not prevail it. And then he says, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So you and I have the power to bind Satan. And Satan don't like to be bound by an ordinary human being like you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. So what he does? Amen. He plays the trick. Hallelujah. Please don't go in that area. Don't touch that power. You want to read the Bible? You want to preach the Bible? Preach! No problem! He does not fear this because I told you something. He knows the word of God. He fears the power of God. And that's why 2 Timothy 3, 5, he says, these people, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. Refrain with such type of things. He said, don't associate, I have nothing to do with them. Who does not believe in the power of God. Who does not believe in the manifestation of God's power. But today, he says, oh brother, I am preaching a full gospel. Where it is full? Where it is full? See clearly, here Paul is writing from prison to Timothy. You know, they are called pastoral letters. They are not epistles. Pastoral letters, they are called. 1 and 2 Timothy. He says they have a form of godliness, but denying his power from such people. Turn away who don't believe in all this rubbish. Because the kingdom of God is not word, but power. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The first quality, it will give you power. Power over the devil. Power over... The creation. That's why when they said something, manifestation of the realm of the spirit took place. Joshua is fighting over there. Battle is not yet finished. They're getting tired. The sun is coming down. He said, son, I command you to stand there. Amen. Hallelujah. You will never see that any way till now. Amen. But it happened. Amen. When a man said, you know, the natural resources or the natural phenomenon which has been created by God obeyed man. Amen. Hallelujah. Elisha said, at my word, at my command, for three and a half years it will not rain in Israel. The heavens for one time was shut and for three and a half years there was no cloud Amen. that was appeared in the sky Amen. till the word of the Lord came. He says, go and tell Ahab, it is time for it to rain. Yes. That's when he sent his servant. He says, go unto the mountain and look. 
He went and saw the first time. He went and the second time. You see clearly, James 5, 17 says, Elijah was a man with a nature like us and he prayed honestly that it would not rain. He did not rain on the land for three years and things. See, that's why he's telling Elijah was a man with our nature. That means like us. He's not some superman or some uh, very uh, anointed. That's why his prayer had power. No, he says he was like us. He was like you and me. He was not superhuman. He was not superman. Hallelujah. He did not have supernatural power. He said he was like us. Like us. That means what he was able to do. Even today, you and I can do. Hallelujah. And when he prayed again, the heavens gave rain and the earth produced his fruit. And binding of the devil has been given to each one of us, to the believer, not to pastors. Amen. Ah, this is only for pastors. Who said? Who said? Jesus, whenever he said, is for a believer. He said, whoever believe. So when I, the word believe come from the word believer. Hallelujah. If you believe, you are a believer. Amen. You are not a pastor. I am not telling. Oh, no, 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 no. This is only for pastor. This is only for prophet. Sir. This is only for the fivefold ministry. No, 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 no. He said these signs will follow. In the gospel of Mark 16, 16. Jesus said what he said. These signs will follow for those who believe. It's for who? It's for the believer. You see. Verse 17. Let's see what he says in verse 17. What he says in verse 17. And these signs will follow. Those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. And what else? Next verse. What else will happen? <laughs> they will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly poison. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay the hand on the sick. They will recover. For who? Not for the pastor, not for the prophet, not for the apostle, not for the evangelist, and not for the teacher. It is for the believer to Hallelujah. access that power. Amen. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ so never think that oh, the pastor can cast a demon. I cannot. Because you are limiting yourself. Amen. Never limit yourself, my brother and sister in Christ, because God is unlimited. You share the attributes of God because we are core hair with Jesus Christ. That what belongs to him belongs to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what Paul said. It's the same spirit. The same spirit in Romans chapter 8 verse 40 says, the same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ is the same spirit that is dwelling inside your mortal Bodies, hallelujah. You see, verse 11, Romans 8 11, he says, The same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit. He's saying it is the same spirit, he's not telling it's a different spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, they had a different spirit. Joshua Caleb had a different spirit. Daniel had an excellent spirit. But yeah, Romans says it is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling inside you. That means the same spirit that resurrected Jesus is the same spirit that is dwelling inside you and it's the same spirit that is ready to perform you, to empower you so that you can destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ. That's why I will tell. I don't believe in denomination. Denomination was never made by God. Yeah. God showed me many times. I studied theology. I studied church history. I know everything. Depth. I'm not just only here. I know. No way it is written. That's why I show you from scripture. I preach from word of God. I don't preach out of the word of God. So the question is, when you say you are preaching a full gospel, I am preaching a full gospel. You are not preaching a full You are preaching only half gospel, my brother. Because what you like is your preaching. Is what you like you eat and what you don't like you throw. You see clearly. Amen. And that's where the apostles, they operated in the full gospel. Amen. Jesus operated in the full gospel. Amen. But today you are not operating in a full gospel meeting. You are only operating what you like. You're only operating in what you're very comfortable. And you think, oh, that's only what God is called. No. That's where the devil today is being making you ignorant of the power of God. Yeah. He fears the power of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that power 
has been given to you and to me. Hallelujah. By God. To the believer. When I came to know that, I really was surprised. I thought it was only for the pastors. Unless God one day revealed to me and said, no, 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 my son, it is for you. Then he said, oh, you know, you are, uh, I thought it is for the pastor. He said, no, no, no. It's for the believer. You re He says, whoever believes out of his belly and out of his heart again shall flow. Reverse of it. Again, it's for the believer. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit and speaking, not for the pastor. It's for the believer. Who believes? Every way you see Jesus always says, who believes? Who believes? Who he believes? You are speaking to the believer. You were not speaking to some pastors or some apostles or some bishops. He was talking to you and to me. Because God wants to empower you for greatness. To do great things. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, what I do, you do. They did. They did. If you want to know whether they did or not, go and read Acts of the Apostles five times fully. You will understand what they did. The problem in the church today, they, they remove Acts of the Apostles and they read something else. Because till today, the Acts of the Apostles is there. Just like the revival in Azure Street, which broke out in 1906 on April 6. There was a man who came all the way from Africa. William Shemar, his name is. He came to, Carola, to California and he conducted a small meeting. It's still today you can see, if you hit in the Google, you can see that. Azus revival, it broke out on that night. They were all Methodist people, all cold, cold like ice. God wants you to be on fire, not cold or not even lukewarm. The church has become cold because of what? Lawlessness. Bible says, Matthew 24 verse 12, see what it says. Lawlessness will increase. Sin will increase and the love of many will become cold like ice. It will be cold. But once upon a time you are on fire for God. Fire. Fire. You came over here. You became cold like ice because of the climatic condition. There is no prayer life. There is no reading the word of God. There is no worship. There is no even time for God. You tell you to come Sunday. This Sunday you will come. Next Sunday you will not come. My brother and sister, he said, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Cold, they will become cold. But Jesus Christ said, I want to kindle that fire inside you. I want to ignite that fire inside you. I want to, you know, that fire which once started in you. That's what happened. That night, that pastor never gave up. He came all the way from Africa to California. He prayed. The first person was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The second, third, sixth. Such a way they started to speak. The neighbor out woke up. Revival broke out. What it broke out in 1906, it continued till 1950. That was the great boom of the Pentecostal movement that took place in America. Because the Holy Spirit is not a respecter of person, nor the respecter of place. Hallelujah. When your Amen. heart is ready. Amen. You will receive. No one can stop it. Not even the devil. Because it is for the believer. Hallelujah. It is for the believer. If today you believe. Lord I want to be used powerfully. I am a believer. I am telling you today. Mark my words. God will use you in a mighty way. You will not expect. Amen. You don't have to be ordained as a pastor. You don't have to go to theology and study. No. You need to have a relationship. One to one. Amen. Your heart is ready. He will empower you and he will show the world that who he is. Hallelujah. I am telling you today. I was just an ordinary person. There are many people on this world who you do not know. Because they don't come on social media. You do not know their lives. But they operate in the power of God. I have seen, I am telling you, my brother and sister in God. Because it has nothing to do with age. In the eyes of God, age has nothing to do. It is to do with your heart. When your heart is ready to receive, He will empower you. He will use you in a mighty way that wherever you go, your ministry will be with signs, wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. That's what today the Lord is speaking to us about full gospel. But you are boasting and telling, oh, my ministry is the full gospel ministry. And when anyone is possessed with the devil, you cannot cast out. You cannot heal the sick. You can't do anything. The way they come, 
is the way they will go. It is just like the woman who had the spirit of infirmity in Luke chapter 13. This woman who used to go to the synagogue because in those days there was no churches. The Jewish people, they had synagogue every Saturday. It's a marketplace where they made the scholar synagogue. Even today, if you go to places like uh, Golden Green, if you go to Stamford uh, Hill, you know, you can see they still have the synagogue. Jewish people in Judaism, they meet there. Hallelujah. And see what happened here. And behold, there was a woman who had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and in no way raised herself. Next word, let's see what it says. Really. But when Jesus saw her, he called to him and, and said to her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmities. And next verse, let's see what the word of God says. And he laid his hand on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And next verse, let's see what happened. You see clearly. But the ruler of the synagogue answered indication because now here comes the religious people, the Pharisees, okay? Because Jesus healed on the Sabbath and he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men have to work. Therefore, come and be healed of them. And that's, and that's what today, my brother and sister, the church follows those traditions, those customs, those rules, those regulations. So when you know churches with rules, regulation, you will not see the power of God. Hallelujah. So out not this woman being a daughter of Abraham. Now see, he's calling the woman daughter of Abraham. Who Satan? Who Satan has bound for 18 years be loose from this bond of the serpent. Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw this. This woman is coming every Sunday to church and going every Sunday she's coming to church for a thing. Man of God is just looking. All are looking. This woman may be born in this way. Or maybe a thing. 18 years. 18 years she is going to church. Man of God cannot see in the spirit. It happened that that day Jesus visited that synagogue Amen. on this particular day. Bible says in Matthew 14, 14 that whenever he saw the people, he was moved with compassion. Hallelujah. Because they followed the sheep without a shepherd. They followed him that way. 14, 14. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. He saw he was moved with compassion for them. And he healed the sick. He saw in the spirit. He was Amen. a man of revelation. Hallelujah. That's why I say today, too much knowledge. Pastor, too much knowledge. Too much knowledge of the world. They don't know. He said. He was moved with compassion Hallelujah. when he saw the sick. Amen. He was moved with compassion when he saw the daughter of Abraham being afflicted. But where is the pastor who is preaching the word of God every Sunday from the pulpit? Could not see and could not discern. I am telling you my brother, that is the state of the church today. That is the church of the church. 18 years passed. The lady suffered for 18 years because the man of God could not see in the spirit. And that's what today many pastors, many so-called pastors and bishops, they are not able to see people are being born by the devil. But they cannot be delivered because the same situation happened. But when Jesus saw it, he also told the age. He said 18 years over, this woman is suffering. And this person who's here, who's leading the synagogue, who's reading the Torah, who's reading the Pentecost, who's reading the law of Moses, could not do anything. Jesus came in a fraction of a second. He says, woman, be loose, for she is a daughter of Abraham. Amen. He was moved with compassion and healed. My brother, my sister in Christ, that is what full gospel is about. That is what ministry is about. Ministry is not about who you are, what you are doing, how big is the ministry, how big is the church, uh, how much money you are making out of it, what car you are building, what car you are driving, what building you are staying in. No! That is not. He was moved with compassion and immediately, Amen. Hallelujah. he said, Satan, 
get out from her. And immediately these people who thought that she had the sickness like this, she became straight. Hallelujah. She was delivered. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ came to deliver the sick. That's what Isaiah 61 says. But the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to heal the sick, to proclaim and to deliver for those who are being afflicted by the devil. That's where the reason. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, that's what today. You know, clearly and today, that's what the Lord is speaking to each one of us. You see, the spirit of the Lord is upon me in Isaiah 61. To preach the good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and those opening a prisoner for those who are being bound by the devil. Now, Acts 10 38, he says, before I finish my message, Acts 10 38. See what he clearly they say, who Jesus was. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all the way oppressed by the devil. For God, this lady who was 18 years in infirmity was oppressed by the devil for 18 years that he went good healing all those oppressed. God was with him. My brother and sister in Christ, so when you have the Holy Spirit with you, Amen. When you have, a, it will empower the believer Hallelujah. to do great things for God. Amen. They did great things for God. Amen. They took Jerusalem upside down. Amen. They said, these, uh, these people have come here who turn upside down. Peter is just walking like this, the shadow of Peter. They brought the sick. They brought those who are being possessed by devil. And immediately, the shadow of Peter had the power. That immediately thing. They went to Paul and said, can you please give me your, your handkerchief? They asked. He said, take my handkerchief. Immediately, devil started to come out. The sick started to be healed. <laughs> they carried power. They were just ordinary man. You see, that's why they wanted to garland them in Athens. He said, don't garland them. We are just like ordinary men like you. They said, for the gods have come down. When they saw the miracle, they said, don't do that. We are ordinary people like you. We are just believers. Hallelujah. But the God who we worship is a powerful and a mighty God. Amen. Now, God brought unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And diseases left them and the evil spirit went out of there. Hallelujah. They Amen. carried the power of God. So today you want to remove the book of Acts and say that this is no more. You are telling now this is no more there now. So the Holy Spirit is gone. No more the power of God is there. God said now is finished. Only you preach the word of God. Go and preach the word of God. Many will get saved. It is the Holy Spirit that brings conviction. Amen. Amen. It is not by reading the Bible you will get convicted. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit brings conviction. They spoke the word of God with power. 3,000 souls. Paul didn't tell you need to repent. They said, what shall we do to be saved? What shall we do? We do not know what to do. 3,000, what shall we do? In 2.38 he says, repent of your sins. Baptize in the name of Jesus. For you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when you repent of your sins and when you are washed with the blood of Jesus, 100% you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you and for me. Yeah. It's for the believer. That's see, read clearly. He says, see, Jesus for the redemptions of sins and you shall receive. You will receive, he said. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. What are the gifts? The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit which has been given. In 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 9 we see the gift of healing, the gift of miracle, the gift of speaking in tongues. And today you are ignorant man and telling that you must not speak in tongues anymore. You are telling Holy Spirit has saved. Speaking in tongues only for early churches, not for now churches. Sir. Healing and deliverance is only for early churches, not for now. Miracles are only then and now today. You know God cannot do anything because God is powerless. Oh, now we are telling that God is limit. God is uh, limited now. God cannot be limited. You are limiting yourself. Amen. And that is the lie of the devil. Amen. To deceive you by telling 
that this is not for your church, it's not for you. You just only preach the word of God and that's enough. I will take you to all the countries, all the cities, everywhere. You're doing a very good job. Devil is happy. Because the day you know who you are in Christ, is a different story. Paul says, for I know who I believed. For those who know God, they will do great exploits. Amen. Those who know God, if you do not know God, you do nothing. You just be, from church to church, you'll be jumping around here like a jumping jack doing nothing. And then, oh, I did very big ministry. I did, very, did nothing, my friend. Did you cast out demons? Did you raise the dead? Did you heal the sick? Did you give miracles? You did nothing. Well, I did a big job. What job you did? You did nothing. He says, for those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt and flattery. But the people who know their God will be strong. People who know their God. He didn't say pastor who know their God or bishop who know their God or prophet who know their God. He says people, people, people who know God will be strong and carry out great exploit. My brother and sister, that's what today the Lord is speaking to the body of Christ is speaking to everyone that the power of the Holy Spirit has been given to the believer, to the believer. So, remove that concept thinking, oh, it's only for the pastors, it's for the bishops, it's for, no, it's for everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you preach a full gospel, don't worry, just get excited, I preach to this brother, that's enough. No, you must see the demonstration of God's power and glory. You must see miracles, you must see healing, you must see the, red, the, the dead coming back to life, you must see casting out demons, then only you are preaching a full gospel. Amen. But if you are not doing that, you are still preaching an off gospel or a quarter gospel. My brother and sister in Christ. Hallelujah. And that's where God wants us to give because he gives his spirit without measure. In John 3.34 he says, I give my spirit without measure. In Telugu it says, Koltileni Atma. Hallelujah. So let's